Hey Med Mentors fam, today I'm here with Tariq and we'll be doing a GAMSAC Q&A. So today we'll be covering general questions as well as section specific questions and hopefully this will help clear up any misunderstandings or I guess gray areas you have about the GAMSAC. So would you like to introduce yourself Tariq? Uh, so yeah, I'm Tariq. If you can't say my name, you can call me T. I'm a first year medical student and yeah, that's all there is really to me. <laughs> So we'll start off with our general GAMSAC questions. So question number one, how early did you start preparing and how often did you study for the GAMSAC? And yeah. can it actually be prepared for? You know, I think it can definitely be prepared for. A lot of people out there say that you can't. Practice makes perfect in my opinion. So being the classical biomedical student, my very first time I studied six months out and I was a working horse and you know what? The very first time, uh, I actually failed section one, 49, right? So it, it was tough, but going around that, there's much more than GAMSAT and marks. In my opinion, your mental health and your physical health and what you eat is so much more important. And that's what I changed second time around. And with the second time, I studied around three months out and I passed section one. And did you have any study groups? And if so, how useful was this? I wasn't a really big fan of big study groups because I'm a very social person. So I like to talk a lot. <laughs> but saying that, I did have a really good friend in Melbourne who I would catch the train up to go study there once a week, get a Starbucks, go to the library when COVID wasn't around. But most of it was self directed with me. How did you change your approach for your second sitting? Yeah, so with my second sitting, obviously I was pretty bummed out because failing isn't really talked about in biomed, so I felt like an embarrassment uh, letting everyone down. So with the second time, I tried to take that pressure off myself, like if I fail, I fail, I'll try again. So with that, I really took up yoga. Yoga's been a blessing in my life. Yoga really helped my mindset and it changed it and helped ease some of that pressure. What is considered to be a good GAMSAT score and how does this differ between universities? That is a tough question and I get asked this question by mentees almost every day now that we're approaching GAMSAT. <laughs> And I, I, I don't want to give you a definitive number because every person is unique and every uni is unique. So for example, you've got a great GPA and you know, you've got a subpar GAMSAT, you, you might still have a chance because you've got such a great GPA. But if you're a student who has bonuses, rightfully so, you know, making it equitable for everyone, you, you may need a lower GAMSAT. All of my mentee family out there, if you're sitting the GAMSAT, hands down to you, it is one of the hardest exams out there. And no matter the score, pat yourself on the back for having a go. And just to touch on that, if you come from a rural or regional area, usually requirements are also a little bit lower. So make sure you Google that and find yeah. out how that benefits you. Touching on that, Phoebe, they are lower for a reason. It's not because coming from rural areas are not intellectually inclined. That is a false notion. The idea behind providing a bonus for our rural folk is to have an over-representation of rural doctors because we do have a shortage. So I just wanted to make that clear for everyone because there are some misconceptions about that. So how did you manage your time during the GAMSAT? It's definitely a very long exam, but you also have a limited time for each question. So are you wanting time management during the exam or studying? During the exam. So... For section one, everyone knows that I'm terrible at it. I got a 49 the first time and a 50 the second time. <laughs> um, with that, I really, really tried to limit myself to, I think it was a minute 20 answering questions. So depending on the STEM, I would either read it first or read the question. Now with section two, it's kind of my favorite section. That took me around 25 minutes each for each essay. And then section three, coming from a biomed background, I was able to breeze through that. In short, always have a plan on your time of attack. So for me, I'm very poor at physics. So I skipped the physics questions and stuck to the biology and chemistry. And I guess advice for someone who isn't happy with their GAMSAT score, what would they do, I guess, after the GAMSAT or just in general? I resonate with these people and my mentor uh, is actually the president of Med Mentors, uh, Emma. She is phenomenal. So when I failed the first time, she sent me through a text saying, eat some cake, eat ice cream, have your emotions, take the weekend. After that, let's re-strategize. So what she really meant by that, you know, if you want to eat great food, go eat great food. If you want to be by yourself, be by yourself. But the important thing is to recognize that you didn't do as well this first time and get back on the horse and try again. You know, we all fail and it's so cliche you've got to fail before you succeed i'm living proof yeah 
Yeah, just keep trying. I mean, you can always set the game set again. $500 to set the game set is a bit pricey. I had to use my saving to save up for it, obviously. But, you know, you just go in there and if you've given it your best in terms of study-wise, well done. And if it didn't work out, well, uh, change your study habit and reach out. If you've got a mentor, it'll help so much. If you've got friends, reach out to your friend. Don't be afraid to say, hey, I failed. It will make you stronger in the long run. So we're gonna start off with our section one question for our first question. People think it's a waste of time to prepare for section one in particular. And it's something that generally comes naturally to people. So what extent do you agree with this? Oh, that, that's tough. I'm, I'm going to have to disagree because I disagree from my own experience. So as I said earlier, I actually failed section one the first time. I did 49, pretty, pretty, pretty sad times. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the second time I downloaded this template and basically for any question, that I got wrong or right, I would write down why I got it right or wrong and then I'd go back to it and uh, track my progress that way. And I, I did read newspapers a lot more and was circling key key things, key takeaways. And that, you know, got me over the line. It was only one mark. So interpret this how you will, but 50 was enough to get me into medical school. So section one involves reading a lot of text and some involve very complex vocabulary. Mm. What was your strategy with dealing with words you didn't know the meaning of? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Uh, so I'm going to change it on my second approach. So when I don't know the words of something, for example, I didn't even know what the word context meant until someone explained it. For those of you who don't know, context means the sentences around that word. Uh, if I didn't know what a word meant, I would look at sentences surrounding that word and then I'll try and piece a message and then I would like, okay, what word matches to this message? And then that's when I would pick in the, the choices that you get to pick from. Just like read the sentence above and below and then you get the vibes. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. So how would you improve reading speed? And do you actually need to read the whole passage that they give you? Do you recommend this? Some people do read the whole passage, others don't. And if you're an avid reader, you will read the whole passage because you can't help it. But for me, it really depended on the stand that I was reading. So if I was reading a poem, I would read the whole poem. But if I was reading a chunky newspaper with different comments, I'd only read the relevant comments and then read others if I had to if it said it in the question. Otherwise, I'll just skip it. So now we're off to our section two questions. What kind of essay structure did you use? And did you approach part A differently to part B? For my structure, answering that first, I use just a standard uh, argumentative style and I adapted that style to structure B as well, uh, for section B as two. And the reason for that is because if you can remember one structure, it makes your life easier and you get uh, become a lot more faster at writing your essays. Did you sit the GAMSAT on a computer or did you sit it in person? Yeah, so I sat the GAMSAT in person the first time and then online at home the second time. Oh, and how was this experience for you? I personally, I enjoyed the first experience better than uh, sitting it online because I think sitting it online, you, although you're in the comfort of your own home for when I did it on the computer, kind of takes away from the experience. It takes away almost from your hard work. I think when you sit your games out, you should make a day out of it. Go get dinner the night before or go get breakfast, at, like takeaway. You, you've earned it, you've studied, go treat yourself. And just on the note on sitting the GAMSAT on a computer, so I sat it last year and we sat it on a computer but in the venue. I guess a note is that the typing is really, really loud during section two, but they actually have earplugs at the venue, but they don't tell you. So if you, <laughs> this is just a tip, get the earplugs because it sounds like a severe rainstorm. That's how loud the typing is. So look out for that, guys. Go listen to Phoebe. Yeah, Phoebe's a pro at this. Go get the earplugs. Protect your, protect your ears. So our next question is, considering section two involves a wide range of topics, what kind of strategies did you use to broaden your knowledge, like podcasts, websites, or is this not necessarily needed? This is going to be a long response because section two warrants that. Do what you enjoy. Read what you enjoy. The gamsite is cruel enough, so why make it hard on yourself? If you enjoy podcasts, go listen to podcasts. If you don't, don't. Read the books that you want to read. My advice for section two is this. It's going to contradict everything you've ever heard, so I apologize. Your first 10 essays that you write should take you all day for each essay. It should take you from 8 a.m. to 12 to 12 o'clock. Don't do it at a time. You should be researching. 
whether that's by podcast, a movie, reading, get your arguments down pat. With each essay that you write, you want to have another document uh, on Word, write down what your thesis was, write down what the arguments were, and whether you supported it or with that thesis. Yeah, I think it's definitely good to not time yourself at the start because you're still learning information about the topics. Yeah, you, you, you definitely still are learning. Also, just as important, you're still learning how to write the structure. Because for a lot of us, science folk anyway, I, I apologize if you're from law, we don't really write essays anymore. It's We haven't written one since year 12, so we almost forget how to write. And remember, content is important, but your communication and the process skills that you use when you write are just as important. Our third question is, what happens when you come across difficult prompts or topics you know very little about? This is actually um, a really interesting question. There, I'm probably going to butcher the word, meritocracy. I know it now because I struggled with it in my game set. But when you have a word that you struggle with, uh, what I do is look at the other prompts um, and see if you can get a general meaning. So for me personally, when I was practicing, I struggled with the word meritocracy, had no idea what it meant. But then as I was reading down in other prompts, there was a word such as achievement, earned, I put those two words together that said earned achievement. Doing that helped me actually understand what meritocracy was, right? Before we were talking about context in, in section one, apply this to difficult, difficult prompts that you, you may not know the meaning of and you can have the same effect. That's a very good tip. I'm going to use that now. <laughs> yeah. And I guess for section two, now that it's gone online, how would you improve typing speed? I don't know if I'm the best one to offer advice for this because I've said it once, but first year undergrad, as we all are, we're a little immature sometimes. Well, I was anyway. I used to sit down with my friends just for fun and there's a, an online uh, typing game that measures your speed. I do recommend having a look at that. And if it is online, again, write all your essays online. Don't write them on paper. Yeah, just do everything on the computer. Now we are on our final part, which is our section three questions. So for the first question, is there an advantage for people completing a science related degree? And do you think people need to study for section three before tackling questions? So this question about whether it's an advantage or not coming from a science degree, I'm not going to sit here and lie. You know what? It is an advantage because you're going to be uh, familiar with terminology. And that's the only advantage you're going to get. Coming from a non-science de degree, I think the somewhat at an even playing field because we have to study for section three right and it's not about knowing what an atom is or what uh the formula for pressure is it's about being able to apply the information that gamtech gives you in the stem of the question and applying that to the question itself so it's no longer about um, knowledge per se it's about application our next question is how much of a role does math play in section three Math plays a massive role. Now, I did further math in year 12, and for those of you who don't know, in VC, that's the easy math. It's the math that uh, people who are not good at do, and that's me. Um, so it plays a big role. So I had to YouTube like basic uh, log laws. So it plays a big role. I recommend Khan Academy, uh, YouTube, and being able to apply those mathematical uh, formulas or laws, whatever the mathematicians call it. And definitely it plays a big, big role. So section three is weighted double in some universities. And knowing this, did it affect how you studied for the GAMSAT? So for example, did you spend more time practicing for this section? So Initially, I did spend uh, more time practicing for section three, but I did it the wrong way. I thought knowledge was important, so it was not doing me any justice. But in saying that, when I did learn how to study for section three, which is doing question, I did equal amounts of time on that section with section uh, two and one, because whilst section three is weighted uh, two times more than the other sections, it's e no, I don't want to say easier. It's, um, once you get it, you get it. Whereas section one and two is a little bit more difficult because you can't really apply foundations to that as you can in section three. So given that section three is the final section of GAMSAT and it's a very long test, how did you manage your fatigue? Section three, as you rightfully said, is very long. I want everyone to remember that the GAMSAT is a marathon. Managing fatigue, that started for me on day one of prep. So yeah, you do 20 question blocks every day and then a month out you start doing full exams. 
Hopefully this is going to prepare you for this monstrous exam that you're about to sit. On the day during section three, a water bottle is your best friend. You might go to the bathroom a bit, but I'd rather go to the bathroom a bit than be tired and not answering questions properly. Yeah, that's my advice for that one. Start from day one. So you get plain paper for each section. How did you use this differently? Um, for each section? And how did you maximize the use of paper? Yeah, you see, I think a lot of people think paper is their best friend. I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Just because it's paper does not mean you need the paper. Okay, everyone, it's wasting your time. I think use paper in section one if you, you want to write down a little note. Section three, of course, and a little bit for section two, but you should not be writing everything, every little word down, for example, in section one. You're going to waste your time. Section two, you just want to write dot points and your main thesis. And then section three, obviously there's a lot of math involved so obviously write your math down if you want to maximize it i like i'm a chemistry fan and the way we write equations is for example carbon dioxide plus water equals h2co3 so i would do little flow diagrams of the scientific stems whether that's biology or chemistry and make my own links to understand what the question was asking so thank you guys for watching. That's all for today for our GAMSAC Q&A. And I hope this helps you a lot. And thank you so much, Tariq, for joining us in our video. Anytime. Thanks, guys. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. Cut. Cut time. Section one questions. Cut. Anyways, cut that out, Chris. Cut. Section two. <laughs> Sorry, cut. We're gonna repeat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> so our set of oh. cut. Now we're gonna go answer some bleh, 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 bleh. cut. cut. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cut time. This question, um, cut. We're gonna do that again. <laughs> <laughs> I might take up some yoga next time. I would begin by doing twenty questions. Twenty questions. Sorry, sorry, guys, that is a message coming from my beautiful mom. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're done. That's all the questions. We need, we need an ending thing. <laughs> okay, I guess. Cut. So that's all for today for our get. <laughs> Cut.